Yeah, the situation has calmed down. Uh, the French police have finally managed to get the situation under control outside the Stade de France. As you can see behind me, it is pretty quiet. We're at the end of the stadium uh, where all the Liverpool supporters are. 20,000 Liverpool supporters uh, inside that stadium uh, behind me at the moment. But I just want to swing round and show you where all the problems this evening started. Now, if you can see in the distance where those uh, French riot police are walking uh, towards us. You see that van that is parked there and you can see two white lights there. Now that gap where those two white lights are, that is where 20,000 Liverpool supporters were funneled through. That was the first security check for them to get anywhere near the Stade de France uh, today before the game. Now, I just cannot understand why the French police thought that that was an effective way of getting 20,000 supporters checked before they approached the stadium. So what we happened what happened is we had a massive bottleneck there. 20,000 Liverpool supporters waiting there for two, three, four hours to get inside the ground. They were being let in one at a time. Uh, the police were checking their tickets, checking uh, their phones to make sure they had the right accreditation. Also searching them to make sure they weren't bringing any alcohol or water or, or anything else in their bags into the ground. Now, once they managed to get through there and they made their way up inside the concourse, we had the situation up here. We had 20,000 supporters, and bear in mind, they'd already been waiting uh, for two, three hours. They still had to wait again. If you look down here, uh, some French people watching the game on their mobile phones. Our crew as well. Actually, you can see them there in the distance. The producer, cameramen, security guards, they're all watching the game on the mobile phone as well. It's not as glamorous as you think working in television. We don't have the best seats in the house. But look, I'm just going to show you what happened to the Liverpool Liverpool supporters once they got up here onto the concourse. They were bought, told to come here and the two turnstiles that they had to use to get into the Stade de France were turnstiles Y and Z. We're just going to walk towards them. They are where those two white poles are. Now, what happened is the Liverpool supporters were all here in this area that you can see here, 20,000 supporters. And the supporters we were talking to said that they were kept here for two or three hours. And just behind the gate here, we also had all the French uh, riot police behind the gate. And just try and picture the scene. French riot police here behind the gate. Here on this side, 20,000 Liverpool supporters who were waiting to get inside the ground for two, three hours. And then what happened? From behind, some young French men, boys, look to me, they weren't necessarily football supporters. They surged in, tried to run in, get into the ground, tried to jump over these fences. They were climbing these fences. And then what the French riot police did is they started firing tear gas through uh, these gates, through this fence. And of course, they were firing tear gas into an area where there were Liverpool supporters, 20,000 Liverpool supporters who were waiting patiently to try and get inside the ground. So that is what happened earlier today. We had the problem, the bottleneck, where I don't understand why the French police thought that was an effective way uh, to get supporters inside this concourse. And then we had the problem here in the concourse where there aren't proper turnstiles. There were only two gates where Liverpool supporters could get inside the ground. And it just seems to me that the whole policing operation before this game was ineffective. It was not done properly. And also, after the game kicked off, we had this situation where we had running battles here between uh, the French police and also gangs of French youths who were trying to get inside the ground. Now, look, what I'm worried about at the moment is what is going to happen at the end of the game when these Liverpool supporters behind me, 20,000 of them, are going to leave the stadium. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping that the police operation is more effective for when they leave than it was for when they arrive.